boys and girls. Today I'm going to share a story called Just the Facts, Writing Your Own Research Report. And it's by Nancy Lowen and illustrated by Dawn Beacon. And um, normally I break this story into little sections, like today we're going to focus on researching and choosing a topic, and now we're going to work on picking a good hook, etc. But I'm going to read this book in its entirety today so that you can get a big picture of what information writing would look like. And then, who knows, maybe I'll break it down in another, another lesson. All right, so this is a great story for getting started on information writing or research reports. A research report is a special kind of writing assignment. You don't tell a story. You don't make things up. In fact, writing is one of the last steps in putting together a research report. First, you'll need to pick a topic. You'll learn what experts have to say about your topic. You'll take notes, you'll organize facts, and when you're done with those steps, then you'll write. Writing a research report, report is challenging. Oops, let me start that sentence again. Writing a research report is a challenging task, but a fun one too. By the time you've finished your report, you'll be a mini-expert yourself. So here's our mini-expert. <clears throat> so, tool one. Every research report starts with a topic. Pick one that interests you. The more interested you are, the more fun it will be. Make a list of possible ideas, then start narrowing it down. Look up a few quick facts if you're not sure about your choices. So, brainstorming ideas is really important, right? You need to have those facts. So here it is, her list. She's looking at polar bears, um, and she went, polar bear is losing its home because of global warming, vampire bats drinks blood, platypus has a weird bill, lays eggs, koalas are cute, Python up to 33 feet long and can swallow a goat. Whoa. So she picked a few different topics and she found a quick fact or two to see if it would hold her interest. And it looks like she's going to choose the platypus. Now, for fifth grade, we're encouraging our students to not do an animal report because third grade is often where you do an animal report. So we're moving past that for information writing. And you might want to pick up a topic like global warming, or how to recycle better, or the civil rights movement, or a career you're interested in, or a college and its history, those kinds of things. Something a little bit different than the, the animal report. Okay? Tool number two. The research begins. Books, magazines, and newspapers are good sources of information. So is the internet. You might even talk to a person who is an expert on your topic. If you use the internet, make sure your sources are trustworthy. Look for well-known websites. If you're not sure, ask your teacher or librarian. Try for at least three sources. If a book or article is too difficult or too easy, put it aside and try to find something more fitting. Don't worry about your report the first time you read your sources. Just enjoy learning about your subject. And I think that's the part a lot of people skip is that they don't just enjoy their topic and learn about it um, and get some information in their heads to kind of get a sense of what kind of questions they might want to ask to further their understanding of their topic. So just research searching it with at least three different sources. In my class we use the internet a lot, but you can find three different articles on the internet, right? So let's see. Tool three, once you're familiar with your topic, start brainstorming. Write down all the questions you might want to answer in your report. You probably won't be able to include everything in your report, but that's okay. So she brainstormed. Where do platypuses live? What do platypuses look like? Do platypuses have any enemies? What do platypuses eat? Do female platypuses really lay eggs? How many eggs do they lay? How long do platypuses live? Are platypuses endangered? What sounds do platypuses make? How big is a platypus? Do platypuses swim? Do they walk? Are platypuses active in the day or night? So this person was able to generate some really cool questions to research for their information writing because they already had some background knowledge from just reading about their topic and enjoying it. So you get better questions to take notes on 
really looking for specific information. But it's hard to write really good questions before you know your topic well. Tool number four. The next step in writing a research report is to take notes. Index cards make note taking easier. Write one of your brainstorming questions at the top of each card. As you reread your sources, record the answers to your questions on the cards. You might need more than one card per question. Include the name of your sources on your index cards, as well as a page number or website address. If any question comes up later, you'll know exactly where to look. Where do platypuses live? Tasmania and Eastern Australia. Platypus, page 10. Besides streams, rivers, and lakes in eastern and southeastern Australia, stretching from Queensland down to Victoria and Tasmania, a platypus's world, page 3 to 22. So there, what she did was cool. She answered this question when she found it in two different sources, so now she has a comparison to make, and kind of she can combine those two sources' information in her writing, which is what makes it her own. Okay, what do platypuses eat? Insects, larvae, shellfish, and worms. NationalGeographic.com. Worms, insects, fish, eggs, water, water plants, shrimp, a platypus's world, page three and six. So here were those questions she started with, and then as she's finding information in her sources, she's writing the notes, right? Quick jots about the details that she needs to answer that question. So cool. Note taking is kind of fun. Ah, so now, tool five. Ah, writing your report will be easier if you plan ahead. An outline will help you do this. An outline lists the ideas of a report in the order they will be presented. Some outlines are very simple. The example here on the left is a simple outline. It lists general ideas rather than specific facts. Other outlines are detailed, like the one on the right. Use the type of outline that works best for you. So if you look, this one's just really simple, right? It says introduction, where the platypus lives, how big is it, snout, tail, feet, how the female lays eggs, baby platypus, conclusion. This one is introduction, a riddle, um, it's not a joke, strange mammal, but actually makes sense. It's habits and appearances, and she lists those there that she's going to turn into sentences. The snout, because it's a special feature, she's got the details that make it an interesting paragraph. The tail, so you can see that she's kind of done it a little differently, depending on how you organize best. Tool number six. The first paragraph in a research report is the introduction. The introduction should do two things. It should get the reader's attention in some way and it should state what the report will be about. This introduction begins like a riddle. It hooks us. We know that the platypus is different from other mammals, and we want to keep reading to find out why. All right, so here's the riddle, right? You've picked your topic, you've done your research, taken notes, and made an outline. It's time to write. What has a bill like a duck, a tail like a beaver, and feet like the otter? This question sounds like a joke, but it's not. The answer is a platypus. The platypus is one of the strangest mammals on our planet. But when we take a close look, we can see that this odd animal makes sense. So there's her opening. And she made sure she had a hook and that her first paragraph says what she's going to talk about. Platypuses live near lakes and streams in eastern Australia and the island of Tasmania. They are about half the size of a cat. They have brown waterproof fur. They are active mostly at night. Tool seven, the body is the main part of a research report. It is usually three or more paragraphs. The body includes the most important information about the topic. It's a good idea to provide some basic information early in the report in this paragraph. We find out where platypuses live. We find out how big they are too. If we didn't learn those things right away, we might wonder about them throughout the report. So I'm making sure you give some basic information. See, she's got a little map there too with captions. The most unusual part of a platypus is its bill or snout. The bill is covered with dark rubbery skin. It has tiny holes all over it. 
Inside the holes are nerve endings. These nerves sense motion. They help the platypus find its food. Platypuses use their bill to dig up food from the mud. They eat shrimp, worms, fish eggs, and insects. Tool number eight. The first sentence in a paragraph is called a topic sentence. It lets the reader know what will be talked about in that paragraph. It's like a mini introduction. After the topic sentence, every sentence that follows should add detail. Here, the topic sentence introduces us to the platypus's bill. So, there you go. And here she is examining her platypus. I don't know that I'd be able to get that close to a platypus, but whatever. The platypus has a flat, wide tail. It's shaped like a beaver's tail. The tail is covered with fur. The platypus uses its tail and hind legs to steer while swimming. The platypus also uses its tail to carry away dirt when digging a burrow. Fat is stored in the tail too. The fat gives the platypus extra energy during the winter months when there is less food. Like otters, platypus have webbed feet. The platypus's front feet are like paddles. They help the platypus swim. On land, the web being folds up between the platypus's claws. The platypus's short legs are on the side of its body. The platypus is a good swimmer, but a slow walker. As you write your report, remember what you promised your reader in the introduction. Do your best to stay on track. So far, we have learned how the platypus uses its strange tail, feet, and bill. We see that the platypus does indeed make sense. Tool nine, sentence variety. What sentence variety makes a report more interesting to read? Start your sentences in different ways. Sentences often begin with nouns, the platypus, or pronouns she, he, it, or they. That's fine. Just don't start all your sentences that way. See how the third and fourth sentence in the first paragraph are different from the rest? That's an example of sentence variety. Let's see, listen for sentence variety. This mammal has another very strange feature. It lays eggs. In spring, the female makes a long tunnel with a burrow at the end. Using her tail, she brings in leaves and reeds to line her burrow. She lays one of two, three small leathery eggs. She keeps the eggs warm for about 10 days. So she, one sentence is started with an introductory phrase, using her tail, comma, got it. When the baby platypus hatches, they are blind and hairless. They are called puggles. They drink milk through tiny holes in the mother's skin. The puggles are fed by their mother for about four months. Then they leave the burrow and start learning how to catch their own food. Oh my goodness. It's about 16 weeks, I guess. Tool 10, the last paragraph in a research report is the conclusion. Re Mind the readers of your main points. If possible, go back to an idea in your introduction. Bring your report to a pleasing close. When the platypus f was first seen by Europeans in 1798, people thought it was a prank. They could not believe that the creature was real, but now we know better. The platypus might look strange, but its bill helps it find and catch food. In its tail and web feet help it to swim and dig burrows. The platypus is no joke. Tool 11, revision, is an important part of all good writing. Pretend you're reading your report for the very first time. Are your facts presented in an order that makes sense? Are you missing any important facts or have you included facts that aren't needed? You might need to cut, add, or move information. Tool 12. When you're happy with your report, it's put together. It's time to proofread. Check your spelling. Make sure your commas, periods, and other punctuation are used correctly. Tool 13. The final step in writing a research report is a bibliography. A bibliography lets the reader know where you got your information. Bibliographies can be written in many different styles. Ask your teacher for help, or you can follow the example on page 27. 
So I use EasyBid and have it set up, but you can kind of look at this page for a second and see the details. And there is that page. So there are 13 tools you need to write great research reports. Every research report starts with a topic, one, then the research begins, good sources, two, of information including books, magazines, and websites, brainstorming, three, helps the writer decide what information to include in the report, notes, four, and outline, five, help organize the report and make writing easier, the introduction, six, lets readers know what the report is about, the body, seven, contains most of the information, Every paragraph in the body should start with a topic sentence. Eight, starting sentence in different ways creates sentence variety. Nine, and makes the report more interesting to read. The last paragraph is the conclusion, 10. It sums up the reports and brings it to an end. The revision 11 step allows the writer to add, cut, or move facts around. In the proofreading 12 step, the writer takes a close look at spelling, punctuation, and grammar. The final part of the research report is the bibliography 13. It lists the sources used to write the report. So there it's all listed. And um, I hope you got a quick overview of how to do some really cool um, research and writing for your information topic. I hope you enjoy writing your information papers. Thanks. Catch you later. Bye.